censored and unable to support himself as a writer in his lifetime, Walt Whitman has become known as the most American of all poets. This month marks the 100th anniversary of Whitman's death and the start of Democracy's Poet, a Walt Whitman celebration. Over 50 events in and around his long time home of New York City will applaud the Whitman legacy, starting with the tribute of the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. Free poets participating in that event join me now. Allen Ginsberg, winner of the National Book Award and creator of such groundbreaking works as Howl and Kaddish. Sharon Olds, winner of the National Book Critics Circle Award and Pulitzer Prize winner Galloway Kennel, who, among other honors, holds the title of State Poet of Vermont. Welcome. It's good to have all of you. Alan, tell me about Walt Whitman, um, why he's a, you know, how you feel about him uh, as a poet. Well, first of all, he opened up an expansive spirit in poetry and also in um, the philosophy of America, you might say, or he expressed an expansive spirit that went beyond uh, nationalism to a kind of uh, totally open-hearted, tolerant, friendly, international, uh, good heart. Mm -hmm. and, and another important thing is that he opened up the verse line, so, so that expanded too, as well as the, the expression, unobstructed expression of feeling. And among the more intimate feelings were uh, feelings of uh, between men, love of men, or right. what he called adhesiveness. Right. And in some respects, he's the precursor of gay liberation, although I notice it's not been very much featured in the national newspapers in this great celebration of the centenary of his death. It's sort of a point that people tend to avoid, but it is there very strongly and very beautifully and very humanely. He was and openly and well known to be gay? No, no, no. It's just in his poems you find right. it. Uh, and also in gossip and also in um, some questions in his own time, like I think mm. Swinburne, was it, the, was it Swinburne that uh, wrote him and asked him whether, yes. whether, he, was, whether he was homosexual or whatever the word was mm -hmm. then? Yeah. Or uh, whether, he, whether he indulged in the love that dare not speak its name of the day. And I, and I, I think, he, as uh, Galway was mentioning, he had, or yourself, that he, Oscar Wilde. Oh yeah, that's what I read, I mean, I mentioned that, and in yeah. fact, we'll, we'll um, tell you about it more. I'm sure, you, you, Sharon, you're familiar with that, aren't you? This great meeting between Oscar Wilde and Oscar, I guess was in Philadelphia, was it Philadelphia? Camden. Camden, that's Philadelphia. right, because it wasn't far from where he lived. Yeah. Yeah. And so Wilde was coming to town, yeah. and, he's, and, and he said, I would want to meet Walt Whitman. Well, on this great lecture tour in America. Yeah, and, and Whitman said, I'll show up between 2 and 3.30. And evidently showed up, and they had this marvelous really? encounter. Yeah. And and I guess Oscar Wilde came dressed as a dandy in a yeah. sense. I mean, and and Whitman was there in an open shirt, or however yes. Whitman. An American and rough. And American <laughs> rough, yeah. And they had, I guess, a, a yeah. drank and talked, yeah. and 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 had a fascinating afternoon yeah. together. What attracts you to him? What for you? As a poet. Well, everything that, that Alan said yeah. is very familiar to me. That. Um, the, and also the gorgeousness of his language, the ecstatic quality of his language, the particulars, ordinary things, but seen in um, a very exact and very beautiful way. Yeah. Alway? Well, I think of Walt Whitman as, um, <clears throat> as the father of American poetry. Not every poetic tradition has an identifiable father, but we have not only a a father, but also in Emily Dickinson, a mother, and um, Poe and uncle, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and Poe was an and, uncle, and, and, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think that everybody who writes now, in whatever way, um, in this country, owes a great deal to Whitman, and I, I feel I owe uh, everything to Whitman, really, because really? everything. Well, I don't know. No, okay, I'm, I'm not underlining there everything, was a but there a lot. Was a, there was a time in my life when I felt really stuck, and I was writing um, in uh, rhyme and meter, and, but I was in France, and <coughs> they asked me to teach a course in Whitman at um, the University of Grenoble, and I had never paid much attention to Whitman, but during the time I was teaching that course, Whitman was my only contact with English. Yeah. and had a tremendous impact on me. I immediately threw away the way I had been writing and turned to uh, that long cadenced line of uh, Walt Whitman's and that almost idolatrous love of the actual world. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's really good. I, I think he, Whitman's had an influence not only on American poetry as the father 
uh, inseminator of uh, uh, openness, but also all over the world. All over the world. Yeah. Yeah. China, 1919, with Guo Moreau and Ai Ching, introduced mm -hmm. the Whitmanic line. The Russian futurists and symbolists were... And, and Neruda, Neruda said, Whitman is America. my greatest teacher. Neruda said that. My yeah. greatest teacher. Yeah. The French symbolists got yeah. something yeah. out of it. Uh, yeah. the, uh, the but he wasn't recognized, I mean, uh, in his own time? He was recognized time? in America, but he was also excoriated and insulted as a, as a degenerate or as a, as a per person who had written, uh, a, well, dirty work. Yeah. Was it, was it, he lost his job at some point. He right? did. Yeah. yeah. What, but he it also... Customs it house or what was it? I it was think on the Eagle, too, on the Brooklyn Eagle. He lost the job yeah. there? Yes. Over and then they said the Custom House wasn't evidently so particular in their morals, they insulted him in some way. Yeah, but people loved him and came yeah. from all over to see him and learn but, from but him. But wasn't it a kind of a cult that came to yeah. see him? Mm. He wanted to be a poet of all the people, and he never in his lifetime succeeded in being that. And, and the uh, real purpose of this um, 100th anniversary celebration yeah. is to realize, is to recognize that he has now yeah. become the poet of our great national poet. Well, a funny question, but why do we celebrate his death rather than his birth? Well, it happens to be... Um, I know, it's March 26th <laughs> is when he died. <laughs> but <laughs> premature to celebrate it. When, when, when was he born? What year was his birthday? Uh, I, I, 30s? I, I know, yeah, I got it somewhere. I read that. <coughs> so uh, early, in 1912, he still was a figure that... We wanted to celebrate 100 years, and so 100 yeah. years came up, and so it was an appropriate yeah, yeah. time to do it. Yeah. But, you know, uh, up to 19, what, the 50s, there was a big argument, you know, in New Jersey over naming a bridge the Walt Whitman Bridge. Yeah. Because, then because, because, then because of the lifestyle he accused, question? He was accused of being gay yeah. by yeah. some, uh, some yeah, as a Yahoo in New Jersey, and who insisted that they change the name to the, uh, the uh, who wrote trees? The, uh, Kilmer. Kilmer. Joyce Kilmer. Joyce Kilmer Bridge. Kilmer. Yeah. And they were going just about to name the Joyce Kilmer Bridge when somebody came up with the fact that Kilmer was gay. Yeah. <laughs> so they went back to the Walt Whitman Bridge. Yes. That, <laughs> I remember that yeah. scandal. But he was also very political, was he not? I mean, he very strongly outspoken about slavery. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and I spoke. And temperance. At and one point. and temperance. At one point, too. Yeah. He wrote temperance novels. What's your favorite? I mean, do you have something you can read? Uh, you you yes, brought a uh, book. A, a glimpse. Very brief. Okay. Allen Ginsberg. From the Calamus section, which is the some more openly erotic section. A glimpse through an interstice caught of a crowd of workmen and drivers in a bar room around the stove late of a winter night, and I, unremarked, seated in a corner, of a youth who loves me and whom I love, silently approaching and seating himself near that he may hold me by, my ha by the hand, a long while amid the noises of coming and going, of drinking and oath and smutty jest, there we too, content, happy in being together, Speaking little, perhaps not a word. Yeah, the name of that was Glimpse? A Glimpse. Yeah. Do you have something of his that you can read with you? Yes, this part from, from Song of Myself. Okay. Walt Whitman, an American, one of the roughs, a cosmos, disorderly, fleshy, and sensual, eating, drinking, and breathing, no sentimentalist, no stander above men and women or apart from them, no more modest than immodest. Unscrew the locks from their doors. Unscrew the doors themselves from their jams. Whoever degrades another degrades me. And whatever is done or said returns at last to me. And whatever I do or say, I also return. I speak the password primeval. I give the sign of democracy. By God, I will accept nothing which all cannot have their counterpart of on the same terms. That's very nice. That was the name of that was the song. That's a part from Song of Myself. Okay, here's a picture. Do you have something? Oh, did I you? do. Okay, yeah. here's a picture of Walt Whitman. This is the Teachers and Writers Guide. I'll come in there. You can see that on the monitor there. But there he is. Uh, he he was how old when he died? Do we know? Um, uh, he was 70s. 70s. Let me 70s. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have something. For, this this yeah. is actually from the Essential Whitman selected by, by Galway Gnell. Gnell. <laughs> Gnell. Yeah. Well, I'm going to read one of his uh, last poems. He wrote a lot of uh, farewells to the world, right. and this is the most beautiful. F that I think uh, the late poems are terrific. Yeah. I really enjoy them. The Last Invocation. Um, at the last, tenderly, from the walls of the powerful fortress house, from the clasp of the knitted locks, from the keep of the well-closed doors, let me be wafted. Let me glide noiselessly forth, 
with the key of softness unlock the locks with a whisper set ope the doors o soul tenderly be not impatient strong is your hold o mortal flesh strong is your hold o love that's the last that you put in your book yeah that's the last one in your book yeah yeah, yeah. you have another uh, well so from that old period very okay. brief uh, he was able to include a lot and so he says as I sit writing here, and this is from a group called Sands at 70, as I sit writing here, sick and grown old, not my least burden is that the dullness of the years, querilities, ungracious glooms, aches, lethargy, constipation, whimpering ennui may filter in my daily songs. Wow. <laughs> so he put it in that way mm. <laughs> by saying he was worried mm. that it would get in there, but he allowed it. That's yeah. what I like in this. Tolerance. You touched on it earlier in, in, the, in my first question, but I'd like to share one more sense of, of what made him great and what is his contribution that, that makes him stand apart, you think, Sharon? Well, I wonder about uh, how he could have been so great so soon for the kinds of things he did and said that are the kind of freedom and the kind of love of all kinds of people which he had and then there seemed for a long time very it wasn't a popular thing and now it's, it's something that uh, that many more people feel so to me it's astonishing I don't know where it came from his his gorgeous language and his kind of great gorgeous heart towards the human but if you had to make the case as to why, Arthur Schlesinger said, mm -hmm. our greatest, our best, mm -hmm. how would you make the case? Well, I would say, um, let's see. Um, and, and listing his the most important contributions. Yeah. So. Um, I would say the first thing was that he opened new areas uh, for poetry that had never been touched upon in poetry before, that were somewhat taboo. Um, secondly... Is this the eroticism or the homosexuality that... The, no, uh, everything. No. everything. Oh, that's, that's just right. one of them. Okay. And Thrills, um, the, nature, the ugly. Yeah. He has a poem on right. a compost heap, for example. Right. Um, the ordinary. The thing. ordinary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, Thank you and for that correction. Secondly, the, the um, intense love he had of the actual here and now, you know, the, the people of his own time, the little streets, the, 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 um, the way people made their living, he loved all that, and he walked down Broadway with his notebook and yeah. pencil poking into um, uh, blacksmith shops and writing notes and so on about these people. And thirdly, I don't know if any poet has ever impressed his or her presence um, and personality more vividly on the page than Whitman did. When you read Whitman, it's as if Whitman is talking to you. Who yeah. touches this book touches a man, he said. He mm -hmm. said, who touches? Who touches this book touches a man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, sum him up finally for us for as me, we leave here. For me, know? the grand quality, which he proposed for poets to come for after him, yeah. was candor, uh, inadvertent frankness, uh, undeliberate, spontaneous uh, <coughs> uh, uh, revelation of what's really, what you really think. Candor, truth, and authenticity. Well, no. his word was in the preface to the early edition of uh, Leaves of Grass was can candor. C A N D O R, candor, right. which is an interesting word. It's, mm. you know, like it's, it's not candor. frankness, which is a little pushy. It's not uh, truthfulness, which is a, making a big claim. It's just yeah. like accidental, natural uh, uh, being uh, sincere and honest mm. and straightforward. And so in the poems, you have very candid uh, references to his feelings, uh, which are much more naked and bare uh, as, as presentations of how you really feel inside than most poets are able to manage out of some shyness, maybe. And, and you rank him where in your own pantheon? Well, I, actually, my favorite is Blake, and right after that, I guess Whitman. Wow. I guess. Well, then there's Shakespeare and all those other yeah, mountains. I know, but those but Whitman, I always thought, was a mountain too, ba too vast to be seen in America. At least when I was in college, because he was not—he was—he was so big, it was invisible, and at the same time, people weren't paying attention to the background of him. Yeah. But he certainly turned on American poetry, and it's all I said. Yeah. I thank you. This is interesting, and this celebration will last at least for a month, I guess. Yeah. Uh, well, well, the next uh, next hundred yeah. years at least. As long yeah, as the, that's right. As long as the American <laughs> Empire goes on, who would Whitman vote for? <laughs> <laughs> he sure wouldn't vote for George Bush. Why not? That. Mm. 
because he didn't like maupers and, uh, and niggards <laughs> and uh, slouchers and <laughs> smouchers. Yeah, what, what, and he certainly wouldn't vote for Buchanan, who was the biggest smoucher of well, all. Would he vote for Clinton or Brown? I or think more likely he'd be sympathetic with Brown, because Brown has some spiritual candor. Yeah, and a kind of insurrectionist and ra well, rallying again, against the, candor, the establishment. The candor, again, this is what people resent about Brown. And we, they want to keep calling him Moonbeam rather than Mr. Candid. Okay. Uh, I'm over, otherwise we could continue talking. This, yep. uh, the goal, I have some books here. Uh, the Gold Sale. When was this written, Jim? Uh, it came out in 87. 87. Here is uh, White Shroud, uh, poems 1980 to 1985. I think before this was collected poems. Yeah. It? yeah collected. I, I remember big last red. Time I signed yeah. for you. That's right. Galway Kennel, one, one we ought to sign has those. lived, uh, I'd like for that, a long time alone, and here, The Teacher's Guide, and then uh, The Essential Whitman. I thank all of you. Pleasure to have you on this broadcast. Thank Very you. much. We'll be right back. We'll talk about the Oscars coming up. Your favorite picture is what, Alan? Uh, my own private Idaho is the only one. It's not picture. nominated on. <laughs> That's my Whitmanic yeah. picture. Uh, favorite motion picture this year you've seen? Uh, this year? The, I saw a, re a rerun of Les Enfants de Paris. Oh, <laughs> put them all into I'm the, the wrong the group shadow. here. What's your favorite <laughs> film? I haven't seen one. Haven't seen <laughs> the, say that poet. Naked, oh, I forgot. Naked lunch. Naked lunch. <laughs>